Hi, this is The Business Guy. Let's talk about the Corporate Transparency Act that requires those who own, control, or form most corporations and LLCs to report identifying information to FinCEN or the Financial Crimes Enforcement Network. FinCEN issued a final rule on September 29th, 2022, implementing the beneficial ownership information requirements. And I've not only read the entire act word for word, I just read the entire 2022 FinCEN final rules that updated the requirements. So I've studied it with a fine tooth comb. Now this act requires one to file a report about the beneficial owners of every company in the United States to FinCEN, a Bureau of the U.S. Treasury. So I'm going to shine a bright light on it, expose it. I'm going to talk about the good things, the bad things, and what you need to do as a business owner and as a practitioner. First of all, this is a big deal because every owner of a U.S. company needs to do it, as you'll see. Everyone who sets up a U.S. company on behalf of others, including attorneys, need to do it. And because the penalty is up to three years in prison and attempt thousand dollar fine for intentionally not doing it. Plus, under Title 18, $250,000 to $500,000 for providing false information about it. Plus, we're going to talk about the new requirements about when you need to start reporting. So what I'm talking about here is a big deal. And my purpose here, as you watch this whole thing, is to be the most complete video on the internet on this subject, telling you exactly what you need to do. So I highly suggest that you watch this short video to the end. Plus, you can call us. We help file this report for you, and we don't charge very much for doing it. And at the very end, I'm going to tell you what I uncovered, the most shocking shocking thing about this brand new law, how it massively increases, yes, increases the privacy of ownership for corporations and LLCs for law-abiding citizens. Hi, I'm the Business Guy, and today we're going to talk about the Corporate Transparency Act. And if you could do me a favor and please click the like button below so YouTube promotes this video, I'd really appreciate it. And if you haven't already, you can click the subscribe button so that when more videos come out like this one, you'll be up to date right away. Now, I've been the CEO of a legal document firm filing corporations and LLCs for 31 years. So this is my perspective and that of our on-staff attorneys. But don't take this video as legal advice. You can call our office and speak to one of our attorneys. We have filed literally millions of pages of documents, most of which are corporations and LLCs both in the U.S. and internationally. So some would say that would qualify me to talk about this subject. So real quick, here are the main updates first for existing companies. Existing companies have from January 1st, 2024, until January 1st, 2025 to file the report with FinCEN. Companies formed on or after January 1st, 2024 must file the report within 30 days of company formation. Also, if any of the information on the report was inaccurate, when the report was filed, the reporting company has to file a corrected report within 30 calendar days after becoming aware of the inaccuracy. If one company owns another company, you go back and report the human being that owns the company that owns the other one. So it always needs to go back to at least one human being. Okay, now with that backdrop, let's get down to the bottom line. As a business owner or practitioner, what do you have to do? When setting up a company, you must report the beneficial owners to FinCEN. Now, so I don't keep repeating myself, here's how the act defines beneficial owner. A beneficial owner is one, someone who exercises substantial control over a corporation or LLC formed in a U.S. state or Indian Territory. Number two, somebody who owns 25% or more of the company. Number three, somebody who receives substantial economic benefits from its assets. So one or more of those three things, control, ownership, benefits, as stated above, are what the Corporation Transparency Act calls a beneficial owner. Now, when you form a company or are a beneficial owner, you must provide FinCEN these four things. Number one, the full name of the reporting company. Number two, any trade name or doing business as. Number three, the business street address of the reporting company. Number four, the jurisdiction where it was formed. And number five, an IRS tax ID number. For the beneficial owners, you must report one, their full legal name, two, their date of birth, three, a current residential or business street address, and number four, an image of a passport, driver's license, or other government issue ID card. Prior to this updated ruling, you just needed to provide a number from the document. Now you need to provide an image of the document. No financial information or details about the business purpose or operation is required. Just those four things name, birth date, address, and ID. Now, if you're an applicant, such as an attorney setting up a company, and you are not a beneficial owner of the entity, you not only need to report all of the beneficial owners, you also need to provide the same information on yourself, the applicant. Now, you can also apply for a FinCEN number, and everybody who asks for it can get one to shortcut the process. Okay, next, let's talk about my opinion. There are incredible tax and lawsuit protection benefits for operating your business in a corporation or LLC. So, in spite of this law, operating without a 
company is not a good option. And frankly, as the CEO of one of the leading firms that forms companies in the U.S., I'm not happy about this law. I think it is well-meaning, but places an unnecessary additional ongoing layer of paperwork on the owners of every company in America. Let's say you have 2 million companies a year and 2,000 of them are bad guys. So 99.9% .9 of the good guys have this extra burden for just 0.1% of the bad guys. Now, do bad guys lie? Of course they do. And reading through this law, the bad guys simply have to lie about who owns the company and then have these little side contracts about who receives the benefits, which they're supposed to report to, according to this law, but won't because they're lying bad guys. Plus, when filing taxes, the tax filings already report the ownership of the company anyway. So in my opinion, there's no need for an additional reporting requirement simply because of a governmental database inefficiency. Moreover, there are easy and obvious ways around it. First of all, this only applies to U.S. companies. It doesn't apply to offshore ones. We set up a lot of offshore companies in my business. So one can simply operate using an offshore company. But if you use the offshore company to do business in the U.S., you have to report it. Plus, there are certain kinds of trusts that are on staff attorney set up to own real estate and other assets that a corporation or LLC can own, or one can maintain privacy of ownership. That is, a land trust owns the real estate, but an LLC owns the land trust. So if you're a good, honest business person who simply wants extra privacy, give us a call for more information and we can help you do it legally. Okay, so that's my opinion, but it is the law and we're all subject to it, and we have no legal choice but to comply. I don't like going through security at the airport either. I'm a good guy. I'm not going to hijack any airplanes, but I can lay on the ground and kick and scream and cry, or I can just lay my bags on the conveyor belt and walk through the body scanner. Only one way is going to get me on the plane so I can see my family on the other side of the country. Okay, now for a little background. The justification for Democrat Congresswoman Carol B. Maloney's sponsorship of this bill is that she says nearly 2 million corporations and LLCs are formed in the U.S. every year. Very few states require information about who owns them. And I admit I must agree. We are by far the largest offshore company formation firm in the nation. See offshorecompany.com. And in order to set up an offshore company, the foreign regulations require that we need a reference letter from the person's banker, a reference letter from a CPA or attorney, the company purpose, the source of funds, a notarized copy of a utility bill or other residential address verification, and a notarized copy of a passport. So six things. To set up a U.S. company, we just needed the name of the first director and for an LLC, that can be another company as its manager. That's it. No proof of anything. They say criminals launder money through these companies to buy buildings and other assets and law enforcement cannot find who owns them. And as somebody who sets up thousands of companies, I don't want the bad guys contacting us to set up their companies. I pound on my staff on a regular basis that we only want good, clean, honest business. All others, we do our best to turn away. So there you go. But don't worry. Call us. We have attorneys on staff and we have a service where we can help you comply with this law. We also sell extra large costs coffins for those of you who file lots of companies. Okay, now let's talk privacy. Is this an invasion of privacy? Well, here's the answer. Someone can only get your beneficial ownership information that's been reported to FinCEN in three ways. Number one, a request by local, tribal, state, or federal law enforcement agency. Number two, a request made by a federal agency on behalf of a law enforcement agency of another country, and each must prove to FinCEN that they really do have a right to it. Or number three, a request made by a financial institution with customer consent. So unless you're a bad guy, you really don't have anything to worry about. Not even a bank can get this information without your consent. Now, you need to file this information every year, just like you file taxes every year. This is an annual filing. More about privacy later. Bearer shares. The law also outlaws bearer shares. Those are stock certificates made out to the bearer. That is, whoever holds the stock certificate owns it. That's something we used to offer to clients back in the early 90s when I started in this business. Those are outlawed. Penalties. Now the bad things that can happen if you, number one, provide false ownership information or fake ID documents to FinCEN. Number two, and this is a big one, you willfully fail to provide complete or updated beneficial ownership information. Or number three, you receive a subpoena and you knowingly disclose its existence or other requests for beneficial ownership information unless doing so is needed to fulfill the request or the enforcement agency authorizes it. So if you do any of those three things, provide fake info, willfully fail to provide the info or blabber about a subpoena for the info, you can be subject to a civil penalty of up to $10,000 and under Title 18, which is up to $250,000 for individuals and $500,000 for organizations, plus up to three years in prison. It also adds if you're just negligent, you didn't know you had to do these things, you're not going to get into any trouble. And the Secretary of the Treasurer can waive the penalty if it was due to reasonable cause and not willful neglect. Let's talk about privacy. Here's one of the amazingly good things. 
folks. Now, when I read this provision, I almost hit the floor. This, I think, is a good thing for privacy advocates. Now, I don't know of any other laws like this in America. Even the privacy laws in Switzerland and other tax privacy havens don't have this. I'm quoting the law now. Number five, criminal penalty for the misuse or unauthorized disclosure of beneficial ownership information. It says the criminal penalties provided for under 5322 shall apply. Title 31 of U.S. Code Section 5322 says you can be fined for not more than $250,000 or imprisoned for not more than five years or both. So if I read that right, which I think I did, disclosing the owner of a U.S. corporation or LLC, and you may have to shell it over a quarter million dollars and sit in the clink for five years. So they gather this information information from owners, but only agencies such as law enforcement doing investigations can access it. That means that even someone sniffing around who's trying to sue you or actually does sue you in civil court cannot access it. Better yet for privacy, it clearly states that you can have a nominee such as a nominee officer or director in the public records so your name doesn't show up for somebody who might be sniffing around for your assets. And this is a service that we provide for law-abiding clients who want to protect their assets from prying eyes. So FinCEN will know who the owners are, but that big ugly guy who wants to sue you may not. Now, beneficial owners do not include minor children, nominees, and the like. A mere employee, one who inherited the company or a creditor of a company, unless that creditor is also a beneficial owner. Offshore companies. Again, this law does not apply to offshore corporations or LLCs unless they do business in the U.S. And we set up tens of thousands of offshore companies for law-abiding citizens. You can visit us at offshorecompany.com. So you can have an offshore company and this law does not apply. Exempt companies. The full report reporting requirement also does not apply to publicly traded companies, financial institutions such as banks, or exempt nonprofits such as churches. Now here's a big one. If you have more than 20 full-time employees, in the U.S., your income taxes show more than $5 million of gross receipts, and you have an operating presence and an office in the U.S., you're exempt. Or if the Secretary of the Treasury and the U.S. Attorney General both agree, you should be exempt. But as we said, even if you're exempt from reporting, you still have to file a report to which particular provision of the code makes you exempt. And the person making the filing of this report must provide the same information that a beneficial owner would have to provide, such as name, address, birth date, and ID. So all U.S. companies, even companies that are exempt from reporting still have to file a report. So what are the takeaways from all this? First, every U.S. company needs to file a report to FinCEN, even exempt companies. If you set up a company for others, such as an attorney, you need to report the beneficial owners as well as yourself. This law applies to U.S. companies only, not offshore ones, and not trusts like the ones we set up. And this is a registered trust or the offshore company is doing business in the U.S. So if you need help fulfilling this legal requirement, don't sweat it. We have a service where you can hire us to do this for you. Our number is one 954 41050 or you can visit us at assetprotectionplanners.com. Be sure to click like below and subscribe to this channel. See you next time. This is The Business Guy.